it's handyman clearance here with our new uh, up-to-date project on what we are doing for home improvement <laughs> So many of you do not know that I have an alter ego that I call Handyman Clarence that um, pretty much just does anything home improvements as far as woodworking, tearing stuff up, anything dealing with tools pretty much. Handyman Clarence kind of started back when I purchased, we, me and my husband purchased our first home which was three years ago and that's kind of when I started dabbling more into home improvements and you know just DIYing period like I love DIYing as far as hair makeup and you know nails all that stuff but there's also a rugged part of me that loves playing around with tools and woodworking. So we are standing in my kitchen where I had started renovating about a year ago no about two years ago. We started renovating the kitchen about two years ago and we still haven't finished, mainly because of money. We stopped because we needed to start saving money and we started spending a lot of money and we didn't wanna to go too overboard that we were in just like a whole bunch of debt, which is also another journey that we're taking is trying to become debt free by paying off all of this debt. And most of it came from being homeowners and being parents. So then on the opposite side of the kitchen, kitchen I'm sorry let me turn y'all around so y'all have a better view and this is you know what y'all are seeing versus me being in front of it um, the cabinets that we painted we removed all of all that used to have that little cabinet covering I'll put photos of before what it looked like and we added the shelving I cut it all the wood my husband helped me install it and I painted it and now it holds all of our you know glass trinkets and stuff that doesn't fit in cabinets and we painted these these used to be like a oak color they are now white it's time for me to wipe them down um like i said this is like two a year or two ago and the white has started to you know collect some residue from our hands touching it we installed that microwave that wasn't there before there was no microwave present at all there wasn't even a space for us to put a microwave there um and then down here i painted we uh painted these cabinets blue i had to install new cabinets here i haven't even painted them because after we installed them i was just tired and i kind of just took a break so we haven't even painted these cabinets, and I'm sorry, my dishwasher's just wide open. All right, um, my plan was to paint these blue. We're gonna try to do that now that we have some free time due to the quarantine, and um, they're gonna be the same blue as these, and we added the hardware. The hardware was not originally on any of these cabinets. All that hardware is new. Of course, we plan on replacing all the appliances because this is the original stove that came with the house as well. But my kitchen's a little junky, of course. I mean, my house is never, like, actually ever clean with three kids running around it full time right now. So then the counters I made out of two by four, and we just pretty much stained it, sanded it down the best we could, and installed it. So this is, like, thick, heavy, not that, you know, fiber, carbon bullshit that they usually throw into kitchen. And then we installed the new sink, which is like three times deeper than the old one was. And we installed this nice um, pull screen, pull, uh, pull down faucet. That and we purchased these from Wayfair. I'm sorry, just in case anybody wants to know, we got these from Wayfair. So now on the opposite side of the kitchen, this is pretty much what we're dealing with right now. I knocked out the wall that was connecting the dining room to the kitchen. We wanted, I wanted something open. When we knocked it out, we had wiring up here that was hanging down. We finally hired an electrician and he was able to put it up in the crawl space, or not the crawl space, but the attic. And um, he added a plug right here because I told him how I, I have future plans of putting cabinets and counters here and making this a breakfast nook on this side so the girls can get off of my freaking dining room table and you can see how nasty my dining room table is. Uh, we had to remove a drywall and we had to remove you know the wood that keeps all this looking nice or whatever so we had to remove all that and now I have this exposed beam that we had plans on cutting down but I don't really necessarily have the tools to cut it down today's to-do list we will be doing a 
country style farmhouse beam. I went to Pinterest and searched for, you know, how to make it and it seemed pretty simple. This lady pretty much just took three one by four beams and uh, stained them and put it up there and made it look more decorative than what it is looking right now. So we plan on keeping the exposed beam as part of our farmhouse style inspired decor. And then I'm going to go purchase some drywall so we can fill all that in because of course we're not gonna leave that exposed. Yeah, this is pretty much what we've been living like for the past two years ever since we rearranged the kitchen. We never really finished it and um, it's just, yeah, I'm tired of looking at it now. I think we have time to accomplish it today. So, um, yeah, let's get started. Now it's time to pull out our tools. I'm going in with my miter saw to cut down my one by four pieces to size. And then I'm going to go in with my orbital sander to sand them all down and make them nice and smooth before we sand them and attach them with using my nail gun. I'm going in with my nail gun to attach my wood pieces together. And then I'm going to stain them using a gel stain in the color walnut. It's a very, very dark, dark color. So once I stain everything, we're gonna allow it to dry. It takes eight, up to eight hours to dry before we attach it to the ceiling in the kitchen to give us our farmhouse faux beam. This was probably the easiest project out of the entire kitchen renovation. It took me maybe an hour to attach all of this. Now be very careful with these pieces because they are never 100% straight. They do, they can come very warped. So I had to fight with those a little little bit to get them to attach to the one by four and then we're now going in staining I let the stain sit for maybe five minutes and then I wipe it all off and this is the color that you will get once you have wiped it off now we're just gonna be playing the waiting game and allowing it to dry for the eight hours before we bring it in the house so I just installed the first drywall that we need to fill in. We are waiting for our beam to dry so we can install it on top. You see those nails hanging. We're going to take the hammer and just, you know, hammer those close to the wood. Um, I'm not gonna try to remove them or anything. It's just too much work. I brought in my air compressor because we'll be using the nail gun to attach the new decorative beam to uh, the anchor of the two by four hanging out the wall and make it look a lot more cleaner. And then we'll take some caulking and clean it up so it should look like professionally done after we're done with that. So right now I'm just working on the drywall while I'm waiting for the eight hours that it takes for the stain to dry. But I'm now working on uh, this part right here where we are gonna fill in with drywall just like we did over here on the edge. And it actually looks really good. like. This is my first time really working with drywall, like an entire sheet of drywall and cutting it to size. So I'm kind of impressed with myself right now. I'm not gonna lie. So um, today has been a busy day. It is already four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I'm hoping I can have this uh, drywall hung and screwed into the studs by the time Christian wakes up. So all he has to do is help me hang the beams. So I mean, that wall looks like a professional did it. I'm, just, I'm not gonna lie, but I haven't even puttied it yet. We're gonna putty it and uh, joint tape and all that good shit. So we're not done just yet, but it is moving along very well. So this is my drywall sheet that I purchased from Lowe's. I think it was like eight or $10 for this entire sheet and it comes in a four by eight. And uh, the way to cut it is to have a pretty sharp box cutter or you know, any kind of handheld uh, knife that has a pretty sharp and decent blade. And I just measure out what I needed. I measured my four inches going across and I take my straight edge and hold it up against the drywall and just cut it across um, also using a pencil. And I probably trace it maybe four or five times with the knife, make sure it gets in there real deep. And then we're gonna hold it up and snap it. Like that's just how simple it is to use drywall. Done, oh, I broke a nail when I was sawing. <laughs> 
right now i am cutting off the piece that is going to go in the doorway where the new breakfast bar will be and like i said you're just going to trace it with your knife and knife until you get it you know pretty much clean through the drywall and then i'm just going to snap it right on off so um very simple very easy to use and then we're going to take this piece inside and i have some drywall screws we're going to screw it into the stud to secure it to the wall and then we'll putty it using some uh, joint uh, tape and some mud which was also pretty simple to use I was actually quite surprised on how easy it was to patch up drywall so I am now left with this huge sheet of drywall because I didn't need like nowhere near that much damn drywall so um i guess if the kids decide to bust another hole in a wall somewhere i have plenty of drywall to patch it all up so this probably took me about 45 minutes to cut everything down and screw it in that does not include the puttying the puttying probably took me another hour to do only because i'm just a perfectionist and i felt like it had to be perfect um before i went to bed that night but it looks good. I'm proud of myself. OMG, it looks so good and I'm not even done with it. So we just hung it up. We used the nail gun and some like two inch um, nails to uh, hang that bad boy up there. And we nailed like every two inches apart. So we made sure that thing will not be moving because it is pretty solid, heavy wood. No, baby, I got it. Thank you. So um, I also went ahead and patched up the walls. As you can see, they, they had their drywall and I have also spackled and puttied and taped those down. So those are looking nice and seamless. And I've also done this wall right here. This one was a lot more trickier. I don't know why, but, but it was a lot harder. The corners were a lot easier for me. And now I'm just left with doing this corner right here, which is where our breakfast bar and counters are gonna go. So all I have to do is putty that one down. We're gonna let it dry overnight and I'm gonna come back in the morning. So for tomorrow's goals, um, I would like to go ahead and- Caulk it. Caulk it, yes. Sorry. So yes, I'm going to caulk the corners right there where the wood meets the ceiling. As you can see, there's a gap right there and we don't want that there. So we're gonna uh, caulk that so it looks nice and clean and even, but it has this nice old distressed look like it's been there for years and we just put it up in like five minutes. On to day two renovations, yay! So the goals for today was to uh, re-putty the walls after sanding them down for their second coat and to go ahead and caulk in the faux beam to give it its nice seamless look. So here I am just sanding everything down with a nice sand block and polishing it down as smooth as possible. And then I'm gonna go in with my second coat of putty or mud or whatever you want to call this drywall putty stuff um, and we're going to try to get this as smooth as possible and then we'll sand it down one more time before it is ready to be painted but of course painting will be very last because we still have a lot of stuff to do so I'm also going to do the same thing on the opposite wall where the corners are where we added drywall sheets to we're going to putty that all down wait the four five six hours whatever to allow it to dry all right, so this ends day two, because we started yesterday. So this ends day two of renovating the kitchen. And as you can see, I've placed one of the cabinets. I'm supposed to have uh, one there and also one there totaling up to uh, three cabinets, but I messed up and I forgot to order the, I got the right measurement, but I did not order a blind side cabinet which pretty much means that one side of the cabinet is going to be hidden because this cabinet that will sit here against this wall would be blocking it. So um, I have to take it back to the store. They um, gave me one that looks like this, which isn't gonna work. So with the blind side cabinet, what it is, you have a double drawer and a double door, but one side is going to be missing the drawer and the door because it's blindsided. Hence why they call it the blind side cabinet. Well, I did want to place it to at least see what it was going to look like because these cabinets are like legit 
pretty huge like, as you can see i've finished smoothing out the drywall it looks really good it's still wet though so tomorrow morning we'll wake up and we'll sand that bad boy down we went ahead and caulked the beam that we installed yesterday me and christian um and it looks really good it looks nice and seamless it's at least 24 hours for this stuff to completely dry we finished that wall over there as you can see it's nice and smooth as well you, you don't even realize that a door used to be there right my goals for today over here on my little whiteboard and we we're supposed to add cabinets in the toe ductor so we'll talk about that real quick underneath this cabinet there's an ac vent all of my ac vents are on the floor with the vent being on the floor the cabinet is going to end up covering the ac vent it's like right here in this corner that's where it is so i'm going to have to purchase a toe ductor which is pretty much me installing something over the vent to course the air to come out right here in the toe part of the cabinet hence the word toe ductor hopefully i will be able to install it without having to mess up my floor because the ones that i did see they had it installed on the sub flooring and i just don't want to have to deal with ripping up all of this tile in order to install it like so hopefully i can find a way or a method that i'm able to seal the toe ductor to the tile of the floor without it causing too much of a problem if not then we'll just remove the towel that is surrounding the ac vent and install the toe ductor cut a hole right here in the toe of the cabinet and that way the air will now filter through there um because i definitely need an ac vent in this kitchen so today we um added some of the cabinets we'll add this for our goal tomorrow and tomorrow we'll also look into doing the toe ductor because Everything was closed. I really wasn't able to go and look for the supplies needed to install that. Um, and tomorrow's goals, we'll finish sanding down the drywall and we'll be completely done with that. All we'll have to do now is to paint it, which painting will be very last and here is the before we began starting on our kitchen renovations once again this has been a two-year stretch since we began working on the kitchen and i plan on finish this, finishing all of this like right now like I, I just cannot live in an unfinished kitchen anymore it has been a year since i've knocked out that wall between the kitchen and the dining room and i am finally going to finish it now that i have extra time on my hands due to the quarantine because i need something to keep myself busy so this is going to be several videos on our kitchen renovation. This video is just covering day one and two of me installing our new faux farmhouse exposed beam and attaching the drywall. So the next video, we will see y'all on the next one where we will be adding our cabinets and working on our toe ductor underneath the cabinet. Thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We see y'all on our next kitchen renovation video and peace and love and all that good stuff. Please be safe out here and have a wonderful and prosperous week.